Thank you. Sit down. Sit down. You Girl Scouts over there, sit down. All right, it's Friday, so you know what that means. Let's welcome tonight's guest. His favorite karaoke song is the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> Fox and Friends weekend <laughs> co-host Pete Hexen. <laughs> she took her driver's test on a tractor. Co-host of the bottom line on Fox and Friends. Jerry I can see that. <laughs> She's lean, keen, and can pass for a teen. New York Times best-selling author of Fox News, Good Driven, Catch It! And the Statue of Liberty looks up to him. New York Times best-selling author, comedian, and former NWA world champion. Yeah. All right, before we get to some new stories, let's do this. Greg's Leftovers. Ba, 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 da, ba, da, ba, 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 it's Leftovers where I read the jokes we didn't use this week. And as always, it's my first time reading them. So if they suck, we'll roll Joe Mackey up in a carpet and toss him off a bridge. <laughs> yeah. All right, here we go. Harvard president Claudine Gay resigned after accusations of plagiarism. Gay said she would have caught the errors if she had a larger pair of glasses. <laughs> <laughs> Not surprisingly, people said there was something familiar about her resignation letter. <laughs> <laughs> Actor Shia LaBeouf has reportedly converted to Catholicism after portraying a deacon in a movie. Thank God he didn't play Hitler. <laughs> Choose wisely. New York Mayor Eric Adams is calling Texas Governor Greg Abbott diabolical for sending illegal aliens to his city. And when the illegal aliens finally got there, they agreed. <laughs> Massive waves resulting from a storm in the North Pacific pounded the California coast this week. Streets in L.A. were washed so clean, Governor Newsom had promised to install a fresh coat of feces. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I'd like to see how they do that. People are now buying $500 dog beds for humans. But there is a downside. After just one nap, you have a sudden urge to lick your own balls. <laughs> I like how it was lick your own. <laughs> oh. A tech firm in London is launching a new show featuring an AI hologram of Elvis. They wanted to make a hologram of Lizzo, but they ran out of file storage. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! Yeah. <laughs> According to experts, the average size of an erect penis is 5.17 inches. Oh, my God, you poor baby. Yeah. <laughs> hey, speak for yourself, said one penis owner. <laughs> USA Boxing has instituted a new transgender policy that allows biological men to compete against biological women. Hey, don't laugh. I'm a big fan of female boxers. She did my presence at Macy's. <laughs> <laughs> a Florida woman is suing Hershey's because the jack-o'-lantern-shaped candies she bought did not have a face on them like on the package. But imagine how our kids must have felt on Halloween, being raised by a crazy person. <laughs> Bill Clinton was named over 50 times in the just-released Epstein documents. It would have been more, but those girls sure can run fast. <laughs> that was great. This week, President Biden had to be reminded by Jill that his favorite food is ice cream. He also had to be reminded who Jill is. <laughs> Jill is. 
Self-driving cars are now reportedly exempt from traffic tickets in California. Hmm, I think we found the solution for protesters blocking the roads. <laughs> Earlier this week, a 1.7 magnitude earthquake shook New York City. Oh, sorry, that was the view switching seats. <laughs> kids, you kids. <laughs> President Biden spent more than one third of 2023 away from the White House on vacation. He spent the other two thirds wrapped in linen inside a sarcophagus. <laughs> Sarcophagus. <laughs> According to a recent study, the average American feels just 70% healthy. That seems too high, said one man. <laughs> 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 now to the news. A new report says oops after slandering the troops. It's official. Despite claims of the Biden White House and their media lackeys saying that our military is full of extremists, even their latest research shows that's a lie. And like a gay cousin, the report quietly came out right before Christmas, hoping no one would notice. <laughs> and why? Because it showed no extremism in the military. Of course, if it had shown the opposite, it would be on the front of every news site, like one of Taylor Swift's latest doomed relationships. <laughs> the DOD commissioned the study, which was put out by the Institute for Defense Analysis, it, quote, found no evidence that the number of violent extremists in the military is disproportionate to the number of extremists in the U.S. as a whole. But you must remember back in 2021, Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin ordered military leaders to address this supposed extremist problem after Jan 6 because some veterans participated in the riot. And like maggots on a bone, boy, did the media eat this shit up. Here's MSNBC, quote, extremism in the military is a serious national security threat. The GOP needs to act like it. Here's CNN. The military has long had an extremism problem. I guess that's called winning wars. <laughs> what will it do now to finally solve it? And NPR, the military confronts extremism one conversation at a time. So without defining extremism, they say it exists. And why? Because it didn't exist. In other words, they had to create something from nothing, which is the same job faced every day by those in charge of Biden's campaign. <laughs> but you know what's extreme? Lying about people who signed up to serve their country. But are we really that surprised? This is an administration that smears first and investigates later, if at all. Remember the border agents supposedly whipping migrants when they didn't? Biden trashed those agents, and the media applauded. And when the truth came out, no apology was given, as the media quickly buried it like a cat turd in a litter box. <laughs> and why? While well, they were using American citizens to create a lie that our country is rife with racist hate, therefore voters would need to cling to Joe and the Dems for safety. In absence of sound policy or ideas, that's all they have. But now, once again, that's shown to be full-on BS. And now the media refuses to cover it. They refuse to defend our maligned troops. Meanwhile, when it comes to the Epstein court filings, the media bends over backwards to point out that all the famous names mentioned weren't accused of any wrongdoing. Apparently, it's innocent till proven guilty when it comes to Epstein's pals. But if you're a Border Patrol agent, a MAGA supporter, or in the military, you're guilty as smeared. <laughs> If only our troops had better lawyers. Meanwhile, about Epstein, it is weird that Biden hasn't said a thing about that. Perhaps because whatever happened on that island hits a little too close to home. Yeah. <laughs> Pete, you're a U.S. Army veteran, or so you claim. Um, <laughs> This should piss you off, because when this accusation was put forth, that premise was universally accepted in the media and by people who dare not even question whether there was any data. And universally accepted by generals. Yeah. So take Mark Milley and Lloyd Austin. Mm -hmm. Okay, if this military is so racist, if our ranks are full of extremists, 
Who was in charge over the last couple decades? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where have you been? Mm -hmm. All those racist platoon leaders and staff sergeants that you've been running around allowed to be skinheads and Ku Klux Klan inside the military. What you been doing about that? Mm -hmm. They were, like they've been doing for decades, kowtowing to their political handlers mm -hmm. who are more interested in social justice or whatever new ism is involved. Mm -hmm. And so they're running around talking about white rage and studying Ibram X. Kendi mm -hmm. about a problem they know doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Because if you've been in units, as I have been very recently, in fact, I was holding a riot shield outside the White House during the riots of summer of 2020. Mm -hmm. It's a little odd when you're standing shoulder to shoulder with black guys and white guys and Hispanic guys and the White House is behind you and there's yeah. real extremism in front of you and real racial animos. I, you can't imagine what I heard from these people toward black soldiers. Yeah. What, what, the, what the Antifa and BLM riders were saying to the blacks, that was real racism. Mm -hmm. And what we were doing standing shoulder to shoulder was saying, it doesn't matter what you're... This, that's what all, all the leaders of the Pentagon know this. They yeah. knew this was a sham. So then they do the study, which confirms what we all know, that they're actually less racist in the military because you're taught to focus on merit and your responsibility, and then they bury it and don't want to talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. And while we are obsessed with so-called extremism in the military, Hamas, you know, attacks Israel, and we're surprised because we thought the number one threat was inside. Oh, absolutely. And still on the Internet, I'm pissed more than usual. <laughs> oh. New York Times Magazine, this was January 20th, 2021. Have you witnessed far-right extremism inside the military? And it's a little survey you can <laughs> fill out because those <laughs> don't know anybody in actual service <laughs> of the country. So there's that. That's true. Um, That's true. This is all at a time when our fighting force is the smallest it's been since before World War II, when recruiting is a huge problem, when trust in, in the military has plummeted to a record low. So we need a volunteer army of just regular old Americans who will gently punish these lying hysterics or these hysterical liars. I'm signing up like uh, I got this great oyster shucker. Mm. For Christmas? Yeah. That'll do a number on somebody's tires. Yeah. Oh. Oh, or, I thought... Yeah. I was like, whoa. Or, hey, whoa. I'm glad she said tires. Tire, because I was... Yeah, whoa. Flame, <laughs> it's a little flame close. And, flame and feces, yeah. sacks of it, bovine, canine, poor son, whatever you need. Nah. I'm right here. This must be especially uh, difficult for you because you're married to a veteran and he is a racist. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm, he's not a racist. That explains he's... the wedding invite well, I mean... not showing up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. He's not a racist. But this He's is... also, like, so nice to you. Yeah, I know he and is. he's not even here. So that's a re really <laughs> up thing. <to> <laughs> it's a joke. He it's literally joke. did her hair. Yeah, for during... a year. While we made fun of him. Yeah. Cammy Salon. Yeah, I did make up a song. Yeah. Yes. All and right. he did serve this country. Yes. And thank you. <laughs> and he was in the same unit as Pete yeah. was, actually. Was. Not at the same time, but I think it's so awful that these people who literally sign their lives for this country, right? And the same people who are like, yeah, I know that we've sent you away to fight in these wars that we've been busted lying about, like, mm -hmm. a lot. And, you know, people have died. Uh, but we don't want to talk about that. Instead, we're going to talk about how you guys are probably a bunch of violent racists. Mm -hmm. It's truly disgusting, and it's so absurd that it has to be some kind of distraction to avoid them from the, so many... So many years, decades, actually, of accountability, mm -hmm. that military leadership, not the people who are actually fighting, not, it's, they say it's the suits, not the boots, right, who are actually there, but decades of accountability. They're like, nope, let's talk about something that we're just going to make up instead. Yeah. You know, Tyrus, it still bugs me. Like, we were covering this Epstein stuff, and every time, none of these people have been charged. None of these people, we, we have to say that legally, but when this story ran, everybody in the media said, oh, you know, extremism is in the military. That's just a, that's just a given. Well, well Greg, uh, and I'm sorry, Pete, there is extremism in and around the military. Yes. They're the ones reporting on the 
Yeah. It's the, the extremists who are attacking the military. Yeah. Because just the idea of young men who usually come from lower socioeconomical places join the military to see the world and work together. And let's say me and Pete were in a foxhole together and he got hit. Right? And he needed someone, he needed a pint of blood and someone to carry him out. And it was just me, yeah. old blackity black tyrant. <laughs> and I said to Pete, all right, man, I'm gonna have to do this. Uh, I'll wait till someone is, I'll wait for O'Reilly. Wait for O'Reilly. <laughs> no, seriously, I'll carry you out. No, 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 I'll wait, I'll wait, I'll wait. It doesn't happen. Mm. No one's ever with enemy fire coming down, looking around going, how long is the black guy gonna be in the foxhole? <laughs> so it just, it's made up. But it's by the extremists. And to your point, Greg, you said they, ne they never investigate. Because mm -mm. it's not about, you just, this is how they work. They just say mm -mm. And they don't have it because they feel the military is racist because these guys get up at 4 a.m. <laughs> and they train. Yes. And they do it for God and country and their family. And they're willing to bleed to keep us on couches talking <laughs> And all of that. <laughs> takes hard work. <laughs> hard work, integrity, and accountability, and that is extreme to the progressives. There you go. Oh, yeah. All right. Well set. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.